here's a photograph I took the other day in Sutton Park. Um, I'm, I hope you can see it alright. I'm, I'm struggling with the light at the moment. I've had to screw a tablecloth to the roof because the the sun's coming in. It's it's a real pain in the backside this time of year. Um, we get away with it over winter because the sun's pretty low in the sky. But anyway, we've got a bit of water there and some trees either side of the bank. And there's a little path running through with some shadows. I'll try and create some sort of strong shadows coming across like this and then just a mass of trees all over the place. It's all the usual gear. Got me tea towel here to wipe the uh, water off the hake brush. Here's my palette. Got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarding crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. They're all Cutman watercolours just squeezed out and allowed to dry on the palette. Got me water jar with a nice lip on it. Takes off the excess water off the brush. And then I've got 15 by 11 Fabriano. So one more quick look at the uh, photograph and then let's get cracking. So I'm going to kick off using clear water all over the paper using the large Ron Ranson height brush. I'm going to dip the tips in again and I'm going to go into a bit of raw sienna, uh, a little bit of the burnt on bread as well. After the raw sienna. The ultramarine coming from the other side. Bit more ultramarine, bang that in there. Bit more up there. Dip the very tips of the brush in, just to bring the hairs back together. Then a bit of burnt umber. Bit more ultramarine. Um, yeah, didn't need to do that, but oh, no. that doesn't look right now, that brown. I'm gonna have to go over that with the blue again. Try and get rid of that. And I think that will do for the background. So before the paint comes any further down, it's gonna be a bit dry. Stop the paint all coming down the page. Um, now, first things first are those background trees. So, I'm going to clean the brush and keep an eye on that wasp that's just come in. I'm going to go raw sienna, ultramarine. I quite like that effect, but I'm going to end up paying straight over it now. These are the trees on the other side of the water. Something like that now. I can't really see reflections in the photo, but I'm going to put them in anyway. Um, and you can see, the problem with drying it, is if the paper was still wet, that would have been nice and soft, as it is now. They've got a little bit... Harsh. I suppose I could have re-wet it. Um, I'll just live with it for now. And another thing I'm going to do just suggest a few of these distant trees. Just very, very light. Very light sound. These ones are right into that path. And then I'll do some stronger ones in front of it. Right, now we've got a bit of, you can see a little bit of green, a little bit of green just there. Yeah, like that. 
can always do a few more using the uh, I'm not sure what this brush actually is. I originally bought it as a rigger brush, but I'm used to riggers being sort of a bit longer than that. Yeah, I've probably been better off using this one from the start actually. How much thinner these lines are as opposed to the great big thick lines there. Let's get back to the big brush. I know where I am with the big brush. Sort of onto the land there. And I'm just flicking it up. Yeah, that looks a bit bit naff now, to be honest with you. Doesn't it? it looks a bit. Um, I might just cover it up with a. Uh, cover it up with some more. Yeah, see what it looks like now. So now it's going a bit drier now, it's coming off. See, because it was still wet, it's sort of gone on and it sort of spread. I used too much water, the paper was already wet. And then a bit more, a bit more water on it, just too much water really. Um, I'm sure it'll all look alright in the end, fingers crossed. Now we got she's in the corner of the brush. These are the sort of distant trees. Too strong. A little bit closer and closer. More green more. with a little brush, a bit more water, I'm just getting brown and brown and blue. Clean the brush. I'm just going to work out where this path is. But first, let's just sort out. You can use the uh, the rigger brush for this if you want. I just tend to use the um, the height brush. It's just a lot quicker. Just enough water to get into a nice chisel edge. And then just delicately. Right, just there we got some. trees here in here. There's like a big one you know, over there right like now. Yeah. Switch to the smaller brush just to find some of the finer branches. Mm. 
Here's the brush again. And sort out. Actually, I'm just going to pull this tight because it's just stretched a little bit. Get it flat against the board so it can work with it. Now I'm just going to leave that light because when I put the shadows in, it'll look more effective. Back to the little brush, and there's a few little tweaks as well, giving up into the water. Just get my fingernails in there to bash it in. Back to the little brush, and then just pop a few more smaller branches in. As the, as the paper dries, it will go on thicker and stronger, and get a nice contrast in with the uh, with the wet. When it was painted wet on wet in wet. Right, then I think it's time for the shadows now. So I'm going to do. First, I've got to make sure it's dry. Shadow mix, which I'm going to go in sort of burnt umber and ultramarine. They're fairly strong, so I want them to look quite dramatic if I can. I want to make sure there's enough so I can do it all in one go. I haven't got to reload the brush. So I think if I start off down the bottom and then we've got sort of big shadows coming down there. Like that. Yeah, sort of Does that look? 
bit like strong shadows. Careful not to, um, being careful not to paint over everything. I want to leave obviously the lighter areas to help create the drama. Um, where does that look like? I think I'm going to leave it like that before I get, get so mad with it. Um, I'm just going to put a little figure, put a little figure in the distance, just someone. I'm walking away. Um, I need I don't know if I can get this see, I'm just trying to get a little shadow for the for the dog and the uh, the man now. So all that's I'm going to do now is stick me now. Hang on. I need a dry part. To put, oh, no. There's a dry area. Just stick it down there. I'm going to pull that off. So let's see what it looks like with the main sun. Before I put the mace on, so I know what I have to do. So I haven't put the the leaves and stuff sort of over here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean the brush, and I'm just going to squeeze squeeze all the water out of it, and then just scuff it up on the tea towel. And then let's get some sort of dark. Just some nice dark green. Skin mm. lemon yellow, pain's grey. Your brush needs to be fairly dry because otherwise you'll you'll just block everything in. You won't be able to see through it all. Let's see what it looks like with the uh, the main sun. So here we go with the main. So let's go in and have a closer look. In fact, first let's just have another look at the photograph and compare it. 
So the, the main thing I've tried to do with this is to, to really sort of make the most of those foreground shadows, try to create some drama. So as usual, I started with the sky, and we got a, it, it's predominantly sort of raw sienna and ultramarine visible through the trees. Then I put these trees in on the far bank, and you can see the difference. The ones put in first, when the paper was still wet, you can see the soft edges. And then paper dry, you can see the hard edges, you see the difference between the two. Ideally, I, sh I should have wet that water area again, just so it was a, a sort of proper reflection of that. Next I've tried putting these sort of distant trees. Um, got on a little bit thick, I suppose I could, I could have done with them being a bit thinner. And then a, just a few more. Well, you can see a few thin ones there put in with the, uh, with the little brush. Um, and then sort of left the path area clear and just concentrated on painting around the path, this land and foliage into the foreground. Just a combination of um, big brush to put in the tree trunks and then a little brush put in the uh, twigs and branches. And sort of a little mass, mass of foliage and, and green on this side. Um, you can see when the paint's put on, when it's dry it sort of goes on thicker and thicker and darker and darker. Really creates some real nice shadowy areas. Contrasting with these lighter, lighter parts of the painting. And then if you can imagine the light sort of coming from this direction down here, so you've got big shadows cast by these trees here. Remember to leave leave some white bits so you, can get, you sort of get the light coming through the trees. So there's the photograph and this is the uh, painting of it. I hope you like that, thanks for watching. Any questions please ask. All these paintings are in my eBay store. Bidding only starts at 99p if you'd like to purchase any. Let's keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.